All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that. If she need on the ride, do I bet that? Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. Listen, I'm about to play this video that uh, some people understand it and others won't. But let me break it down for you. Uh, if you listen to it long enough, I want you to listen to the video and try to understand it. Is everybody saying, oh, I'm tripping, I'm, I'm blowing whichever the, way the wind is. You don't get it, but that's cool. I can't explain 26 years of logistics to somebody that just doesn't get it. But I want you to listen to the exchange between DeJoy and one of the senators. And what the senators want or are pushing for is contract workers. They want contract workers because they feel like adding more career employees to the workforce means that they have to add more people to the pension which costs more money more people more money right that they got to pay um and he, they go back and forth <clears throat> and the joy says he's eliminated almost 40,000 people per year but they go back and forth it's it's difficult for me to explain but listen to it carefully the government doesn't want government workers they want people that they they're complaining that the people were getting converted in the, in the long run they're saying that he made a bad move by converting people also if you listen to the last video they also said that the unions were all on board with the 10-year plan listen so when i say there's nothing that you can do about it moving forward that's because your unions, he said it. This ain't Jay talking out his ass. They said the unions are on board. This is why I say you should be voting people in <clears throat> that have your best interests. Don't get mad at me when I'm telling you what's going on and saying, hey, you know, you kind of stuck with it because you are. All right. But you listen, please listen to the whole exchange so you could understand what's going on between the senator and DeJoy as well as the uh, person in the board of governors for the USPS. All right. I had to give my little man to school in a few minutes. J.H. Mr. Joy, the post office, I guess, before postal reform was losing about a billion dollars a quarter, about four billion dollars a year. It's now it's estimated to lose what uh, maybe 1.5 billion a quarter, or about six billion dollars this year. So, you know, it doesn't sound like a whole lot of success with people talking about you know going in the right direction. The question is: is we've known for I don't know a decade, two decades that uh, what the post office sells is diminishing. You know, first class mail. It's a granted monopoly, but it goes down every year, and I think last year it went down nine percent. So you've got a declining. Uh, revenue source, you know, that uh, you make money from, and then you decided to add 125,000 jobs that were part-time jobs and didn't have all of the uh, ramifications of government employment, which are often 50% more expensive than part-time jobs. Why in a sort of a failing environment of declining sales and uh, perpetual deaths, I mean, just into the future as, as far as the eye can see, would you want to add more government employees? So uh, first of all, we, the first year I got here, we lost nine and a half billion dollars. The year before that, we lost pretty much about the same. The losses over seven years were over 100, or not, were 90 billion dollars. To your point on, and we've had this discussion, to your point on why convert people, because it wasn't working, sir, in the environment. We were in the middle of a pandemic, right? We had about 60% availability of employees. The management at that particular time treated these people as disposable people. 
right? We had significant overtime in, in, in the middle of the pandemic and trying to move forward. And uh, I have a growth plan and it's growth in the package business. And in fact, we are growing in the, pack, in the package business. But we, we, I've converted 150,000 people to full-time positions because that was the right thing to do in this availability to bring stability to the so organization. So basically adding significant costs uh, in so an era we, we, of perpetual debt. No, because at the end, because of the stability, right, and because of the attrition rate that we have in the organization, okay, I'm about 20,000 people less than what we had when we came in here. I'm 50 million hours less to do this, to do more business today than when we walked and I walked in the door. Okay, that's operational management principles, sir. Okay, that's an obvious if you're not if you're not in this type of environment, right? It's something that we had to st stabilize the workforce. We will continue to hire and staff. Uh, uh, right now, in that we have 30,000 less pre-career people, 20,000 more. 20,000 more full-time people, and the stability of the organization. For the peaks, when I got here, we were hiring 40 and 50,000 people for peak. We hired 8,000 last peak, and we did 133 million more packages than the peak before. And the deficit, the debts continue to mount. I mean, I don't see a whole lot of change. This 10-year projection is rosy on things, but the immediate debts are year on uh, getting worse. Yeah, sir, we have taken over, so that, that 50, million, 50 million hours, is uh, 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 like four billion, like uh, uh, over two, over two. What is it? It's like five billion, five billion dollars, a couple of billion dollars out of transportation, and we've grown our revenue sig significantly. So six point nine billion. Six so point nine billion. Corporate, private corporations face these kind of problems, and when they do, they don't add to their labor costs. They try to adjust. So if you're in Washington State and you have union labor and it's costing you too much, you expand into South Carolina and you hire non-union labor. It's sort of the same principle with government unions. Your costs are 70, 80 percent is labor. Yeah. You compare yourself to UP, uh, UPS, which is also unionized, they're about 50 percent cost of labor. FedEx, non-unionized, about 38 percent. So. Everybody admits that the labor cost is a big function of the problem, not only in the immediate I, I, I labor cost, not, that. not only in the immediate labor cost, but in the pensions, as Mr. Martinez pointed out, but those are labor costs, because they're, you know, you have a bigger labor force, you're gonna have bigger pension liabilities. But Mr. Martinez, in the um, private world, you have to account if your pension is short and you're running a private company and you have to make up for the pension with revenue from your company, you count that, right? You, you count that in how your company is doing for the year. Uh, contribution plans. They're not in defined benefit plans, which is what we have here. Okay. So, so you wouldn't add more people. If you were in private business, you wouldn't add more people to an undefined. You'd add them to a defined benefit because you don't want unlimited costs. You no, no, want the defined limitation benefit on costs. is when you're obligated to pay a certain amount to the employees. Right. Most private sector companies today are defined contributions. Right. Okay. But so the, the thing is, difference. is they, but by adding 125,000, you're adding to the problem. You're not actually taking uh, by away from the problem. By adding permanent employees that will well, be in the same question. sort of plan. That's an, that's an operating question. That, that, well, that's but, not a But it's, it's, part, of the, it's part of the problem. You have a pension problem, right? An underfunding of the pension, and you have we to We have a problem created by government. Yeah. To, you us. have an underfunded pension, and you, so you have to account for it, but you're adding more people onto that traditional pension. So we have a pension problem in Kentucky, and it's the same kind of thing. It's the defined benefit versus a defined contribution. Most people get what they put in. They don't just sort of get an amount on and on and on. You get what you put in based on the contribution. But you are not changing that model. You're adding more people to that but model. The, the pension model was thrust on us. I know, but it you're adding, you're adding 125,000 new people to the pension model. So you that's complain a about question. the pension that's model, that's but a... you're adding employees to it. So I don't think you're making your situation any better. And it's not what a private corporation would do. Well, a the private other, corporation other... is not obligated to be in every single delivery point um, in, the, in the United States. And, and most private uh, corporations and that, don't and that, have a monopoly either. So you know, goes, there, there is whoa, whoa, whoa. that as well. A monopoly so, that is declining. But, but here's my point. When you get to the pensions being a problem and you say most of this is generated by pensions and past pensions and this was all thrust upon you, that's fine, but you're adding people to that problem. So when you add 125,000 people to it, you are making your problem worse, not better, in the long run. So in our state, what we do is we're hiring people with a different pension plan. They, 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 they give to a, a 401k and they're gonna get what they put into it. Exactly. And that, that's how you convert, but that's what you should be doing. You should be trying right. to get everybody, you should not hire any new 
employees. But, Every year you should get smaller. You should put people into a different type of a pension program. We can program. have a discussion about that, but we need legislation for that then. Well, no, you don't need legislation to privately the, contract. You don't need, uh, you, you had this. We, you, you're we converting cannot, from the one thing that actually works at the post office, and that is privately contracting people who are not in the government union. It's the only way under today's rules. I would change the rules. Yes, I would change the rules. I would try to fix your pension. But your other point is, is that the pension causes so many of these costs, but when you actually look at the pension, you say, well, we have to buy only treasuries. Probably the last year has been the best year for treasuries in the in the past 10 oh, you're, years. You're, I'm sorry. Because I interest respectfully, rate, because I respectfully interest, disagree because with that. Because interest rates have risen. This I, is a, you have been in a negative interest environment. You know, you, how, have, do you know how the treasury you, you invest... You also have interest rates rising. You know it's how, better than any other year you've had. Do you know how the treasury invests our pension assets? Do you know? I, I respectfully ask you the question. I can't not, answer the question. I can't okay, I'll tell I can't you. you. We turn over the money, and they basically put it in a ladder portfolio of 15 years. So we're locked into a rate. The OIG report, and you might be able, you might be able to correct me, I think our average return in 2022 was like 3.4% or something in that area. Right, uh, that's probably better than it was five years ago. Would be three point four percent when inflation is okay. running at eight percent. No, I'm not it's saying a, it's, it's great. It's, it's still a terrible <laughs> investment. Nothing makes sense about the pension program. I'm not there to defend okay, your well, pension so program. What's your question? I'm against your pension program, but I'm against putting more people in it. So you don't quite get it. You want to quibble over Senator, the pension the, the program getting Senator, this, but Senator. you're adding more people to it. You need to add less people to it, and you need to convert your labor force. It's the only way you can survive. Otherwise, we just keep doling out more massive subsidies to you. Senator, we have, we have not added 125,000 people. We have less people in our employ than we did before. We have we attrit 40,000 people a Your year. Your DFA year. says you want to add 150,000, and you have you, added over $100,000 to the that government that's union. Not, that's, not, that, that's not my plan. And we've, we've used 50 million less work hours, 50 million less work hours this year to do, to do the job. Long range, we will right-size our workforce for the work that we have to do. Right? And that is what part of the plan is. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.